Yeah, so uh, the title is Search and Annotation Tool for Oral History Interviews. Interviews is written a bit strange. I did it on purpose because it, it shows what our starting point was and what our end point was. Um, so the starting point were oral history interviews uh, collected uh, by the Veteran Institute. Uh, it's, uh, I think, 1,100 interviews uh, in a project for, uh, for which Steph Scaliola was project leader. And then in a series of projects, we went all the way to uh, Claren uh, standards. And this was the last project that, uh, w that we did, and that was called interviews. Um, so we did all the way. Um, but it's not the message that I'm, I've come here to say we have solved all the problems that we're addressed now. Because uh, the, the last project, I think, was three years ago. And I think um, what we have built are exactly building blocks, which are a starting point for further developments. Uh, and so that's why I think that it was relevant, at least, to, to give a presentation here and, and show you the tool. Um, so the data we are talking about are these 1,100 audio recorded interviews um, from various missions of, uh, of the Dutch Army and also of the Second World War, the resistance um, collected by, by Steph. And for the two, we had a selection of 250, 246 interviews um, uh, from three uh, sections. So uh, the World War II, Netherlands, East Indies, and the New Guinea. Um, each interview is, say, between two and two and a half hours in average, and uh, it's now stored at, at Dans in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, which is a clearance center, uh, and it has persistent identifiers. Now, background of the tool is, again, it is a range of projects that we did. Um, the book you've seen before, because also Steph uh, showed it, with, with quite another cover. So I think we have an old edition here. <laughs> yes. Um, and it is an, an enhanced publication, uh, so to speak. And this is, in fact, what we started with. So um, the book is on paper, but it also has a, has a, has a version uh, on, on, on the web and also a PDF version. And this contains links uh, uh, for illustrational material. Um, so these are publications, and in publications sometimes they use an illustration of what, what, they people, what the authors are, are saying. And then you can link to a, a fragment in such an interview and hear it and see the metadata and so on. And then in the next uh, project, which was called Living Oral History Workbench, we built this tool. So this was an extension of the, uh, uh, the fragment cutter that we had originally. And then we had this tool. Um, in which we, uh, made, we first made an index of the interviews and then we used automatic speech recognition to disclose the interviews because most of them didn't have a transcription at all. And then we uh, developed an annotation uh, uh, environment um, so that people could use that to search in, 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 the, in the interviews but also to annotate fragments of it. Um, so, and then in this interviews project, um, all interviews had a persistent identifier. They were stored at dance, uh, at the Dance Institute. Um, and we uh, made sure that uh, the metadata um, were uh, made clear and compliant. And I think that was uh, the project where the profile uh, that Dieter was just mentioned, mentioned um, uh, was stemming from. So that, that is, uh, on the one hand, it's specific for these this collection of interviews, um, so it's not complete for, for an oral history uh, uh, profile. But then uh, it also contains a lot of relevant uh, metadata information. So as a, as a starting point and a building block, I think it's, uh, it's relevant uh, if we combine it with the DDI stuff and so on. I think we have something to start with, at least. Um, and then we did uh, a further um, uh, metadata curation of almost all the interviews, because the tool is on only 246 interviews. So for the rest of the interviews, we also needed metadata. And that was the, the last project in, 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 in the line. So we, have, uh, we did it for 950 uh, interviews. And not all of them are already available. Uh, some of them still are under embargo. And perhaps this will change over time. Um, but OK. So the objectives of the tool are to find relevant fragments in a large collection of audio data, to add annotations or comments to selected fragments, 
and to make them available to other researchers or not, which is a, 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 a challenge in its own right, um, so that this can be used to uh, verify research results of, uh, of, 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 of various researchers and, and claims that they do in publications. Um, so disclosing the audio was done by automatic speech recognition. I'm not going into the depths of this, but um, we used, um, uh, say, a, a method of automatic speech recognition, which was which is quite common. So you need, in fact, you need three building blocks. You need acoustic models. Um, these are, say, the sound models um, uh, that, that you need for a language, and then there's a lexicon. The lexicon connects this uh, concatenation of sound models to a word. And then uh, you need a language model, and the language model uh, contains the most probable uh, concatenations of the words again. And these are, say, the uh, probabilistic uh, engine uh, with which it, the automatic speech recognizer tries to, to guess what is being said in, a, in an unknown sentence. Um, what was specific in this project was that we did some speaker adaptation per speaker uh, per interviewee, we uh, transcribed two and two and a half minutes, uh, and used that to uh, to um, for speaker adaptation of our acoustic models for the speaker, and that improved the recognition rate a lot. And what we also did for the language model, uh, we were here in the happy situation that there were summaries, uh, and even on I think I think. 10 minutes blocks of, of the interviews um, of what was being said. And this contained the relevant words, relevant words for the context of these interviews. So we used that to update our general language model with relevant words that could come to the foreground. Because what automatic speech recognition does, it does not give you a perfect transcription of what is being said. But it, what it can do, um, it gives you a disclosure of the material by spotting uh, relevant keywords. And these it can pick out. It doesn't give you a full transcription, but it can spot the, uh, the places, the locations where they are talking about topics. Um, nowadays, we have better speech recognition engines using neural, deep neural networks, uh, um, packages like Caldi and so on. So I would be happy to do this once more with uh, this uh, type of uh, materials, with these uh, engines. So the features of the tool, um, it's retrieval of interviews. Uh, you get the metadata of interviews, transcriptions. Um, I think I will show you the, the demo, and then you will see it. Um, we had two, I think, two relevant publications on this. Um, on the tool itself, uh, there's an LREC publication in 2012, and there's a more recent publication uh, in 2016, also in LREC, which uh, is a kind of similar to um, a publication that uh, Steph also showed. Um, this is on um, the silences in, uh, uh, that you find in uh, these interviews. We did a pilot, it's really a pilot, to see if long silences correspond to emotional passages. So where the speaker is heavily, heavily personally involved. And we did so see some correlations there. So that, that was an interesting starting point. Uh, the interesting thing I also uh, um, uh, had this uh, paper reviewed by Keith, who was the first author of the other one, and she was interested as well, and she really spotted out exactly what the, the flaws of the study were, because it, were, it was because it was, a, it was a pilot indeed, so that was, that was good to hear. Uh, there's lot, a lot to say about this, but let me keep it with that. Um, so um, I give you a couple of uh, URLs uh, going to this uh, annotation tool. Um, there is this, uh, I think this is the official version. This is the version we, we run on our own website. And this is a demo. The demo is interesting because it does not require a login. So you can just, uh, uh, but it also contains a limited number of interviews. So maybe if I click here, let's see what happens. It is connecting, that's always good. Um, so here um, is a tool, here you, is the place where you log in. Uh, we have um, a, an interface both in Dutch and in English, um, and a manual here, if you, if, you, if you click it, you get all the information of how to use the tool with, uh, with examples and so on. 
and uh, you can even go back to the home page. That's always lucky. Um, and then, OK, if I log in here, So this is the first uh, live demo uh, of today, and I hope it works. <laughs> um, so what you see here is the interface, and it shows a way to search by words, but also by interview code. Uh, there are 200 and around 250 interviews, so you can also say, if I know already the interview which I'm looking for, uh, so I can go to that interview and, and select it and, and, and look into it. Um, if I come from another um, uh, approach, um, I just would like to look for certain passages with relevant words. So you might be interested in friendly fire, for example, and uh, in Dutch this is called, I think, eigen vuur. I could type that in, and, uh, but it is two words. Now what it will do uh, by nature, it, it will look for fragments which contain both the words, so they may also be swapped and uh, there may other words be in between. So there is another way of inter it's advanced search. If you do that, you can say, I want them exactly uh, in this order and no words in between and so on. Uh, so this gives you a, a bit uh, better uh, way to, uh, to look for it. OK. And if I go back, let me see. So um, if I try this and um, look for eigen vuur, and say I want to search for it. It gives me uh, a fragment from interviews where this, uh, these words occur in this way. So and I can click one, for example here, and uh, what I will see here is uh, the fragment uh, with the metadata coming with it, uh, a summary from, for the passage, say, of, of 10 minutes, uh, you see. And here, but it's all in Dutch, you see, that the translation uh, uh, equipment is really important if you, if you want to look at, at it from, from the English point of view, of you only master English. Um, and I come to the rest later, it also has the sound, so you can listen to what's being said. I don't know whether this works here, it's always... Okay, yeah, I can allow it and see what happens. So he says, vuur op eigen troepen. So this is a, a changed way of doing it. But you can also go further and have them really connected by the advanced search. Um, what you see here is um, um, this little cloud says, um, there has something been done. There has been an annotation here. It says, this is about friendly fires. So a researcher added this uh, uh, here. Um, so you can get the annotations coming with it in this way. Um, now, if you would be interested in having the full interview, now you know the code, so you can go back and say search by interview code, and you could, um, let me see if it comes here, and you say, well, for example, it's two to three, I'm not sure. Um, then you can have the full interview, and what you can also do is then uh, select something uh, of, of a size that you think would be proper. Uh, so begin an endpoint, and then you can show the selection. Even the complete interview, you could uh, do that. Now, there are some other options here. Um, here is a way to look at uh, uh, my own annotations. So the annotation that I made as a, as a, uh, as a researcher. Um, so these are these ones. Um, but if other researchers, so everyone has his own login, um, made uh, transcriptions as well, uh, or annotations, you can also look at the annotations of other people uh, and get these available. And these are, are, of course, a lot more, you see. So for example, here's an annotation. This, uh, this is an interesting uh, in annotation because it also contains uh, extra material. Here uh, there is a, a graphics uh, uh, file, so you can also upload uh, uh, um, other material like pictures. So here's a map of uh, the Stad Venlo uh, as extra uh, material to, to, to make the point clear of the, uh, of the annotation. Um, I think we're almost there. 
with um, um, let me see going up here. So the same you can do for transcriptions. Transcriptions are really uh, transcriptions <coughs> of the audio part that you have there. Um, and there are some uh, export facilities. So uh, you can export annotations and export transcriptions So to use it uh, uh, later. Um, so this is a, is a short overview of what the tool is able to do. So I, I told you it is, has been built uh, five years ago. It has its limitations, but it still contains, I think, interesting functionalities that we should keep in mind when we go on and uh, with our thoughts of how this whole assembly line we were talking about, the whole assembly line uh, would, would, would have to look like. Um, <coughs> So, um, do I have uh, anything more? Yeah, we have, of course, some desirable extensions of the tool. Um, but this is typically for, for the tool itself. Of course, you would like to have a kind of a shopping basket so that you can collect these and keep them for yourself and collect several things in one basket on one topic. That would be nice. Um, what I think is really relevant is what Ion uh, showed. Uh, I can look for topics, I can look for things, but then to uh, bring them all together in clusters, that would be interesting. So that would be the next step in, uh, in this uh, whole line of, uh, uh, of assembly line, in, in fact, that's what it is. Um, so um, this is, uh, I think, what, is, um, yeah, what I wanted to tell you about this uh, tool, and I'm happy to uh, answer your questions.